we Brits love our open top cars. Despite our temperamental weather, although we've been very lucky today, we buy more of them than the Spanish, Italians and French. Just because we like the wind in our hair though, doesn't mean to say we have to compromise on space and practicality. With our weather, it's important for a convertible to have decent enough driving manners to put a smile on your face whether the sun is shining or not. We'll find out if the A3 Cabriolet can do this in our review, as well as revealing our favourite engine and trim level and seeing if it's better all round than its rival, the BMW 2 Series convertible. And remember, if you're in the market for a new car, you can head to our new car deal section where we can help save you thousands. First though, let's see what this A3 Cabriolet is like on the road. There are two diesel and two petrol engines to choose from, but our favourite is the 1.5 litre turbocharged petrol fitted to the car that we're testing today. It's cheaper to buy than the more powerful petrols and diesels, and it's fitted with some clever technology called Cylinder On Demand, which deactivates two cylinders, which helps save you money on fuel, and it's almost as light on fuel as a diesel. It's not as agile to drive as its main rival, the BMW 2 Series. That said, it does change direction keenly, and it grips well through the corners. The only bugbear is the road noise, which can be quite intrusive if you go for a car with the sport suspension or if you go for the S-Line model with the wider alloys. It's worth noting that if you want the S-Line sportier styling, you can pick this trim level and change its suspension to the softer dynamic setup for free. Doing this will reduce the A3's crashiness over potholes. As for the gearbox, you can specify Audi's automatic S-Tronic gearbox, but we wouldn't bother because the payback for super slick fast gear changes when you're driving with some pace is some rather jerky, uncomfortable gear changes when driving around town and also parking. Audi has really mastered the art of creating opulent interiors and the A3 Cabriolet is no exception. It's clad in soft touch materials, matte aluminium trim and metallic detailing. It's really lovely in here. In terms of getting comfortable for driving, there is plenty of adjustment in the seat and the steering wheel. The only criticism is that lumbar support does not come as standard, so if you're a long distance driver, we recommend specking that. In terms of visibility, it's great with the roof down, but with the roof up, it's a little difficult to see out the back. However, you do get parking sensors as standard. Also coming as standard is Audi's MMI infotainment system and you control most of the car's functions using this chunky rotary dial here. It's one of the best to use on the market and it has some practical touches such as raised buttons so you can make some adjustments without taking your eyes off the road too long. It's a game of two halves when it comes to practicality with the Audi A3 Cabriolet because, well, it's great in the front and pour in the back. Let me explain. If you're six foot, you will find there is plenty of room to stretch out. I'm only five foot four and a half, so I don't really ever have that problem. When it comes to storage spaces, we have got one underneath the armrest, and there's two cup holders in front of the gear shifter, and the big bottle of water. Will it fit in the door bin? Mm, not safely definitely not going to go in the cup holder. What about the glove box? Yes, we have a winner. And somewhere to put sunglasses, which we will need on a day like today. And as you can see in the back, there is not as much space. So I get a cup holder, which is great. But if you're sitting behind somebody who's six foot tall, your knees are likely to be up like that. And the seats are quite upright and not the most comfortable. So I think it's probably safe to say that Audi definitely favours the people sitting in the front. For a convertible, the A3 Cabriolet does have a decent sized boot. Okay, it might not look like it at the moment, but with a bit of clever camera trickery, 
As you can see, it was a lot bigger and you could easily fit a sizable weekly shop or a couple of large suitcases. In this guise though, the load bay is quite shallow and tricky to access. One good thing about the A3 Cabriolet is that you don't have to break the bank by stocking up on extras. Even entry-level sport trim comes with a digital radio, sat-nav and dual-zone climate control. This S-Line version, meanwhile, gets larger alloy wheels, part leather upholstery and LED lights. As for engines, we'd opt for the 1.5-litre petrol because its innovative technology keeps emissions down and fuel economy up. The Audi A3 Cabriolet may not be as involving to drive as a BMW 2 Series Cabriolet, however it has a more luxurious interior and a marginally bigger and more accessible boot. So for those who would like an affordable way to enjoy drop-top motoring and are a family of four, it's a better all-rounder. For plenty more on the Audi A3 Cabriolet, including our full online review, head to whatcar.com. You'll also find reviews on its competitors and we can help save you money on your next new car. Head to our new car deal section. But before you do anything, hit subscribe.